Greetings Traveler, make yourself comfortable. Today we shall tell you a tale about Odin and how he had obtained meat of poetry. Eger did not wait too long before inviting Bragi once more to hear how Aesir had obtained meat of poetry. So Bragi has continued his tale. An old saga tells us that Odin had heard a rumor about meat that will grant skaldic skill and great wisdom to one who will drink it. And as Odin was always searching for new sources of knowledge, he decided to get this so-called meat of poetry. So he traveled from Asgard and into the Jotunheim. There he came to a place where nine thralls were harvesting wheat. He asked them if they wanted some help to sharpen their sights, and to this they happily agreed. Odin then took a whetstone that was hanging from his belt and sharpened the blades of their sights. Those poor thralls were overjoyed as their sights were much improved, and asked whether the whetstone was for sale. Odin had answered that he who would buy it must pay a fair price for it. All said that they were willing to give the sum demanded, and each wanted Odin to sell it to him. But he threw the whetstone up in the air, and when all wished to catch it, they scrambled about it in such a manner that each brought his sight onto the other's neck. After this event, Odin decided to seek lodging for the night at the house of the giant Baugi, who was a brother of Sutungr. Baugi complained of what had happened to his household, saying that his nine thralls had slain each other, and that he did not know where he should get other workers. Odin, who had decided to travel under the name Bolwerk, offered Baugi to do the unfinished job of those thralls, if he could get a drink of Sutungr's mead. But Baugi says that he had no control over that mead, as Sutungr has kept it for himself. But he agreed to go with Bolwerk and try whether they could get the mead. So Odin stayed with Baugi for the rest of the summer, doing the job of the nine thralls. When the first snow started to fall, he asked Baugi for his payment and they traveled together to Sutungr's home. Baugi explained to Sutungr his bargain with Bolwerk, but Sutungr stoutly refused to give even a drop of the mead. Bolwerk then proposed to Baugi that they should try whether they could not get the mead by aid of some trick, and Baugi agreed to this. Then Odin drew forth the auge, which is called Rati and requested Baugi to drill a hole through the rock, if the auger was sharp enough. After a while, Baugi came back and said he had drilled the hole into the mountain, but Bolwerk blowed into the holes that the auger has made, and the chips flew back into his face. Thus, he saw that Baugi intended to deceive him. Still, he asked him to continue his work, Baugi drilled again, and when Bolwerk blew a second time, the ships flew inward. Now Bolwerk changed himself into a serpent and crept into the hole made by Jotun. Baugi, seeing that Bolwerk was not an ordinary traveler, tried to hit him with the auger, but missed him. Bolwerk moved slowly forward until he came out of the hole and into a room where Gunnlod, Sutungr's daughter, guarded the mead of poetry. Bolwerk shapeshifted back to his human form and seduced Gunnlod. He slept with her for three nights, and during this time he drew three mouthfuls of the mead of poetry. On the first night, he emptied Odrenir, after the second, Bodn, and after the last third night, he emptied Son, and thus he had all the mead. He now quickly shapeshifted into an eagle and flew away as fast as he could. When Sutungr saw this, he changed himself into an eagle and flew after him. When the Aesir saw Odin coming, they set their jars out in the yard. When Odin reached Asgard, he spewed the meat up into the jars. 
He was, however, so near being caught by Sutungra that he had pooped some of the meat of poetry out along the way, and whoever wanted it, took it. Anyone who had tasted this defiled meat is what we call bad poets, but the rest of Sutungra's meat Odin gave to the Aesir and to those men who are able to make verses. And this is how poetry was spread throughout the nine worlds. And that will be all for today about Meat of Poetry. I hope you like the story. Let me know what you think about this tale and how Odin obtains this precious meat. Come here again, we have a lot of stories to tell.